You're watching a Nova video podcast. Sea ice is one of the brightest surfaces on the planet. Open water surfaces, on the other hand, are very dark. As we're melting away ice, we're replacing essentially the brightest thing on the planet with the darkest thing on the planet, and that speeds warming temperatures in high latitude areas in the Arctic. When seawater reaches 29 degrees Fahrenheit, ice begins to form. Young sea ice, an elastic crystalline carpet that floats and bends with the waves until it reaches a thickness of four inches. As it continues to thicken, it's shaped by winds and by ocean currents, pushed, shoved, fractured, and stacked into flows, bergs, and sheets. At first glance, the ice appears deceptively inert, lifeless. Everybody thinks of the freezer at home and, and everything's sterile, nothing's growing. But here it's opposite. If you take a chunk of ice and you melt it and you take a look in the microscope, you will find millions of tiny animals and plants in there. They are moving, they are swimming, they are crawling around. It's hundreds of species we are talking about. If hundreds of species live in the ice, there are many more living around it. In the Bering, Every creature is linked to the sea ice. Walrus like to stay in the ice. When the ice is close by, we get our game close. Every day I, uh, I come down here and look at the ice conditions to see if there's open, any open water, if hunting, hunting conditions are uh, favorable. Most of the hunters spend a lot of time observing the weather, the ice conditions, the uh, uh, water currents. Information is going to save your own life or somebody else's life, most likely a family member. Subsistence hunters on the Bering Sea pay close attention to the weather, and so does the Coast Guard, with good reason. It's dangerous out there. Approximately 345. Uh, we will be 80 miles southwest of St. Lawrence Island. We have north winds at 12 knots. Temperature is a uh, balmy 5 degrees out. Okay, uh, as far as uh, protective equipment, we'll all be wearing MSD 900s. We're going to put those on in the hangar. An unprotected person might last three minutes in the icy waters of the Bering Sea. In an MSD suit, survival time goes up to a few hours, which makes the struggle to put one on well worth the effort. Oh, yeah. Sequence of events is planned as follows. We will stop on station and deploy the brow. We'll send the Coast Guard personnel out first to survey the work area. Of course, the first person on is the bear watch and swimmer. Well, we evaluate the thickness of the ice and uh, what the boat has done to the ice. A lot of times the ship will actually hit up against the ice and cause more cracks to form. And if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, for cracks, the two pieces come together and put you in the water. Just a reminder, if someone falls in the water, uh, basically we're going to stop all work. We're going to deal with the situation. The first responders should be the Coast East, please alert them and uh, they'll get that person out of the water and, and let, um, bring them back to the ship. It's a 375 Magnum. Uh, we're carrying an event that we have to put down a polar bear, but we want to avoid that at all costs. It's going to be a, the last resort. If we absolutely have to, we will, or I will. But I, I, we will do everything in our power to avoid it. If uh, the event happens where a polar bear comes up, our policy is everybody off the ice. So this is our first chance to sample sea ice during this expedition. We are taking now several ice cores to figure out where biology is happening, where coloration occurs within the ice. And that ice is pretty new. When, when you look at it in detail, then you see it, it looks like a lot of assemblage of pancakes. And that is relatively new ice that has been formed over the last weeks. 
and, and one thing we try to achieve is to sample eyes of different ages and see how the biology is different between these different kinds of ages. So what we are doing here is we are taking the ice cores and then we are cutting them up in, in different pieces, put them in the cooler and bring them back to the vessel. So the next piece of gear that we are using is our little water sampler. It fits nicely through the auger holes we made. And we take this sample to compare it, what happens in the water with what happens at the same time in the sea ice. You know, snow on top of the ice is very, very important, both for the ice physics and for the ice biology. And, and just to give you an example, such a layer of snow takes away more light for algal growth than a two, me two meter thick ice flow. So knowing how much snow we have on the ice is very crucial for biologists. And what Karen is doing, she's doing long transects, about, about 200 meter long transects, where she measures every meter the snow depth. Snow samples at the beginning and at the end of each transect will be analyzed for their chemical composition. The Bering Sea is among the world's most productive marine ecosystems and everything begins with the sea ice. The sea ice starts to melt and the bloom of algae begins and the entire food web stems back from that. When you start changing the variability in sea ice, not only do you change the variability in algae, but you, you change the variability in everything that feeds on that. So you change the sea ice, you change the algae, you change the entire food web that stems from that, all the way up to the polar bear. Back in the old days when things were normal, we can predict the uh, weather conditions for, for the year and our subsistence activities revolve around these uh, projections on conditions. Uh, but now climate change has changed all that. Hunters uh, about 20 years ago began observing that there were subtle changes in, in the weather patterns and also in the ice conditions and they noticed that the uh, ice was getting thinner and the um, sea level was rising and um, they also noticed that the, there were more extreme weather that were occurring uh, in the weather patterns here. There are a lot of subsistence hunters up there and for these people living with sea ice is part of their daily experience. For a subsistence hunt, they use sea ice as a platform for traveling between locations they use sea ice. And they do it basically every day for months. They have a well-established understanding of the ice system. And, and similar to scientists, they are very concerned about the changes in the sea ice because that is impacting their lifestyle. Ice comes out here once a year. We're out in the ice trying to get food. When I was a kid, it'd be ice in October, right now we don't get it till end of December, January. So it's pretty late. In November, my dad used to pull walrus from the ice. He'd be pulling it in for Thanksgiving dinner. Right now we don't go out. Hey, Jackson's got a fish or something. Yes, he did. Look at that. He's got one trophy. Most of my children live in Anchorage and Wasilla, where life is easier. Conditions are so harsh here, and uh, with this climate change and the adverse weather conditions that we're starting to get uh, all the time is making it very, very hard to harvest our game. Uh, it's not uh, easy like it used to be. We get the uh, high winds in the fall time, and then in the springtime, the ice recedes so fast. The ice you see out here uh, can be gone tomorrow. 